Hello Matrix, welcome back to our channel. My name is Velile Ngosi. In this lesson, we will look at the negative feedback mechanism for controlling body temperature. So today we are looking at the demo regulator. So like always in our videos, we start with showing the examination guideline. So it's the one that is guiding us how we draw our content. So today we are still at endocrine system and homeostasis. So we'll be looking at the thermoregulation, uh, which is in thermoregulation, you must know the structure of the skin using diagram with emphasis on the parts involved in thermoregulation. So we, may, we must make sure we know the parts that are involved in thermoregulation. And also, we must know the role of the following in negative feedback mechanism for controlling temperature or the thermoregulations. We must know the purpose of sweating in thermoregulation. And another, we must know the purpose of vasodilation and the vasoconstrictions. So this is the content of this video. So these are the things that I will explain in this video. So hopefully, you will enjoy. First of all, let me start with showing the, the, the relationship between the body and the temperature. So our body keeps the temperature at close to 37 degrees Celsius. So our body temperature is always kept at around 37 degrees Celsius because if our body temperature becomes less or it drops below this then the enzymes becomes inactive then uh, the body will not function accordingly then if the temperature becomes more or becomes like more than 40 degrees celsius then this one will kill the enzymes or some of the cells will not function it's very important for our body to keep the temperature at this around scale so another thing the body temperature is regulated by hypothalamus in the brain and blood vessels and the sweat glands in the skin so these are the parts that are responsible for thermoregulation hypothalamus blood vessel and the sweat gland in the skin so first of all let me show the structure of the skin so this is the structure of the skin you must be able to label this structure. So these are the parts that are taking part in thermoregulation. The skin contains three layers, which is epidermis, dermis, and the fat layer. And then we have blood vessels. So blood vessels, uh, it's where the blood are flowing through the skin. And then we have temperature receptor, which is the thermoreceptor. This one are sensing the temperature. We have centers for coldness and the centers for hotness and then we have sweat gland so sweat gland secrete sweat and then we have sweat pore so sweat pore are at the surface of the skin that is where the sweat is coming out of the skin so we must be able to label this structure so as a great tools, you might be asked to label this structure and then the next thing we are discussing is the difference between vasodilation and vasoconstriction so we must know the difference and we must be able to explain it so here is the vasodilation and the vasoconstriction so vasodilation is the widening of the blood vessels so if the blood vessels becomes white so more to allow more blood to pass through and then that process is called vasodilation and then vasoconstriction takes place if the blood vessel becomes thin. If you can see this one, yeah, it's very thin. So this is vasoconstriction. So wha what are the role of vasoconstriction and the vasodilation? So uh, vasodilation increases the blood flow to the, screen, to the skin. So if you can see here, because the diameter of these vessels, it's big. And then more blood are passing through the skin. And, and if the blood are passing through the surface of the skin, more heat is lost 
or heat moves from the blood to the surface of the skin, then it moves outside via radiation and conduction. So this is the purpose of vasodilation. So its purpose is to release heat from the blood to the outside the skin or to the surface of the skin. Why vasoconstriction? If you can see here, these vessels are very thin. So less this time, less heat is lost through the skin. Then here yeah, the heat is not lost. This one happened on a cold day and then this one happened on a hot day. So the role of vasoconstriction it reduces the flow of the blood to the skin. So this one prevent the blood from flowing to the surface of the skin because this time we don't want the body to lose to lose heat because maybe you find that externally it's cold. So we don't want heat to be lost. Our body retain its heatness. So this is the difference between vasodilation and the vasoconstriction. So during exam, you will be asked to explain thermoregulation. Then now let me explain how we have to write it during exam. So on a hot day, so on a hot day, we know on a hot day, some many of the times we sweat and many of the things happens in our body. So another thing that we can see that are taking place, the blood vessel becomes thick at the surface of the skin. So to allow more blood to flow through. So as the blood are flowing through and then more heat is lost. So as the heat is lost and then our body we our body becomes cooler. And then again the we sweat. So as it's hot then the sweat gland start to release heat and the I mean the sweat gland start to release sweat and the sweat we lie at the surface of the skin and then as they evaporate so they will move they will move away from the skin with some heat and then more another heat is lost through the evaporation of the sweat so during examination to write this process so on a hot day body temperature increases and hypothalamus is stimulated so this is what happened. The hypothalamus, it's a receptor. So it gets stimulated if the body temperature becomes imbalanced. And then as the hypothalamus is stimulated, impulses are sent to the blood vessels in the skin and to sweat gland. So now the information is sent from the hypothalamus to the skin. And then what happened is vasodilation Okay, so vasodilation is a vessel dilate. The diameter of the blood vessel becomes big. So as they become big and then more blood flow to the skin. So more blood are flowing through the surface of the skin and then the heat is lost through radiation and the conduction. So because it's hot now, heat moves out of the blood to the surface of the skin and then another thing more heat is lost to the skin and then as the heat is lost sweat gland activated and sweating okay so now as the hypothalamus is also sent impulse to the sweat gland so that it can release sweat so now this sweat gland start to release sweat and the sweat lies at the surface of the skin and then start to evaporate. So as the sweat evaporate, so the sweat evaporate and takes away heat from the skin surface. So as the sweat start to evaporate, and then it evaporate with some heat that is on the skin. So it takes away the heat from the skin. So this is how you will explain during examinations uh, on a hot day. So you can take notes then so since i have explained then hopefully you will understand so next up uh, i will explain what happened if or on a cold day so on a cold day so if you can see here 
the blood vessel are very thin, so the diameter is very small. Uh, there is no strength, so here yeah, the body tries to retain its heat or yeah, its heatness. So what happened is the body temperature decreases. So on a cold day, the body temperature decreases. So as the body temperature decreases, the hypothalamus is stimulated. Also here, the hypothalamus is stimulated and then hypothalamus send impulse to the blood vessels in the skin and to the sweat gland. So, but this time, what will the, the sweat gland and the blood vessel do? So the blood vessel, the vasoconstriction, okay, so the vasoconstriction is when the vessels constrict or when the vessels becomes very small to restrict the flowing of blood vessels. And then as the vessels constrict, less blood is flowing to the skin. So now blood, less blood is flowing to the surface of the skin, more blood will flow away from the surface of the skin. So as the less blood is flowing through, and then the less heat is lost to the skin. So now uh, less heat is lost or almost no heat is moving out of the skin. And then as the less heat is moving out of the skin, and then the sweat gland becomes less active. So this time the sweat gland becomes less active. So it's not releasing sweat. And then as it's not release, releasing sweat and then less sweat evaporate, less cooling of the skin. So as the less less sweat evaporate and then the cooling of the skin becomes very small so that the body retains its heat so that it can function according. So this is how uh, the negative feedback mechanism that regulates the body temperature works. So you must know what is a vasoconstriction and vasodilation. You must know the importance of the sweat gland. So these are the most important things that you must be aware of. So this is the end of this video. So please, if you have watched it to this far, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. If you are studying, good luck with your studies. Thank you very much. God bless you.